What is going on guys? It is time for another episode of our Java OpenGL 2D game development tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be creating a animation system um, for rendering our game objects. Basically, we want to make it easy to create animated sprites for our game uh, without having to meddle with this uh, render method in the game object class we created. I know right here we commented implement in subclass because for the moment when we created this, that's what we were doing. But we want to kind of keep from having to write the render method every time we create a new subclass of game object. So we're not going to actually use that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the graphics package and we're going to create a new class. I'm going to call this class animation. And this is basically going to be the class that represents an animation in the game. And we can mess with it like so. What we're going to need is we're going to need an array of images. Public image resource array. And we'll call it frames. And import image resource. I'm going to comment real quick the frames of the animation. Then we're also going to need a public int current frame equals zero to start. The current frame of the animation. I know a lot of these comments seem pretty obvious. Current frame. What is that? Well, it's the current frame. Duh. But I, I know I just uh, makes I have a habit of commenting. I used to not comment my code and that was a mistake because every time I go back to code that I wrote like six months ago I can't make heads or tails of it so it's really important to comment your code I probably do it too much now but uh, my rule of thumb is you can't comment your code too much alright so we're gonna create a public uh, void play this is gonna play the animation it's gonna increment the current frame but first we need to set up a frames per second value so that we know how quickly to increment frames the FPS public int FPS equals let's say 8 by default 8 frames per second we're also going to need a private long uh, last frame time equals 0 to start also while we're at it uh, make the current frame private because the rule of thumb is to make it private unless it needs to be public, and I realize that doesn't need to be public. Okay, so in the play method, we're going to say if... Well, first at the beginning of play, we'll just say long current time equals system dot nano time. So this just gets the nano time and stores it in a current time variable temporarily. And then we say that if current time is greater than last frame time plus now what we need is one second in measured in nanoseconds divided by the frames per second so that's one zero 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 divided by FPS okay so that's one followed by nine zeros so basically one second in nanoseconds divided by frames per second so this, if this returns true, it means it's time to change frames. So we say current frame plus plus. Now, what we need to do here is we need to check to see if the current frame is exceeding the length of the frames here. If it is, we want to loop back around or stop um, at the end of the animation. We'll decide which of those we want to do by creating a new variable. Should we loop a public boolean loop equals true by default because most of our animations are going to loop and we say let's see what do we say here okay so if current frame is greater than or equal to frames dot length that means we've just now incremented to one past the maximum we can use because if frames is five 
uh, in length. So we got five frames, and current frame is equal to five. That's actually already out of bounds of the array because if you, as you probably know, but just in case you don't, uh, array index indices uh, begin at zero. So if we have five objects in our frame thing, their indices will be zero, one, two, three, and four. So that's why I say greater than or equal to, not just greater than. So if current frame is greater than or equal to frames.length, then if loop, then current frame equals zero. Otherwise, current frame minus minus, because we need to go back to the last in bounds uh, frame number. And so that's basically all you need. Now all you need to do is uh, call the play method every however often, um, preferably in the update or render methods. Actually, render makes more sense uh, to call it in the render method. And then you use public void uh, get image. Oh, sorry, not void. Public image resource get image. And simply return frames current frame okay so you're returning the frame in the frame in the frames array uh, that is at the index of current frame and so in our game object class all we have to do is create I'm gonna say animations a public animation array called animations and import animation and then in render um, it can be as easy as saying, w okay, well, actually, what we, what we should do here is we should have a public int current animation. Set it to zero. Sorry about that slight hiccup there. My computer froze up. Uh, where were we? Yes, animations, and we've got current animation, which is the current animation we are supposed to be playing. So in the render method, we simply say, animations current animation dot play and animations uh, current animation uh, sorry this actually should be graphics dot draw image animations current animation dot get image and then x, y, width, and height are already correct. Uh, so animations, current animation, uh, actually really we should do a rotation first. We should say graphics dot set rotation. Uh, whoops, that's not right, that's set color. Graphics dot set rotation, rotation. And then at the end, graphics dot set rotation zero just to make sure everything's back to normal and so basically we play the animation we rotate the graphics object or the graphics thing we draw the image that is at the current frame of the current animation and then we undo our rotation again now we gotta test to see if it works unfortunately I don't have uh, I don't have another image to use at the moment. Uh, well, actually, we could take this one. I'm going to duplicate our old image real quick. So let's call it image2.png. We'll rename this first one image1.png. And these are still that little Nicolas Cage, Nicolas Cage face. Uh, this one I'm gonna mess with the color real quick so we can see that it changes. You know, like, uh, what can I do? Yeah, let's just do that. <laughs> then I'm gonna save it. So we've got two images, one normal and one, or at least as normal as Nicolas Cage's face can be, uh, and then the other one. And what we're gonna do is, where's our test player? There it is test player. We're going to skip the whole render thing right there. And here in public uh, test player 
Okay, we're gonna say animations dot no animations equals new animation animation array of length one. Import animation animations zero equals new animation animations zero dot uh, where's the images in the animation oh frames that's what we called it dot frames equals new image resource array that holds two images if actually can we define those images right now that would be nice import image resource hope I'm not going too fast um, uh, let me undo that and then we'll say frames sorry animation zero dot frames frames not frames equals new uh, no <laughs> image resource animations zero dot frames zero is equal to new image resource and give it the path of slash res slash image one dot png and the second one animation zero frames one equals the same thing except load image two okay now that may or may not work I suppose we'll find out let's try it and it does not work where uh, let me see runtime exception GL exception input equals null image resource image equals image io dot read earl slash res slash image underscore one dot png that is what we used isn't it so test player slash res slash image underscore one dot png uh, what's the problem? Okay, now where did we load the image before? Slash res slash image dot png. That's how we loaded it. So well, hang on, what's going on here? Image equals image io dot read earl. Mm. Earl equals image resource dot class dot get resource. I'm not exactly sure what's wrong here. We've got res image one dot png. Um, sorry about this. We gotta figure out exactly what's going wrong here. Let's set this a little true. Where is the problem? I'm going to the uh, main method, see what order we initialized everything. Yeah, we didn't create the test player till after the renderer is initialized, so that shouldn't be the problem. What are we doing wrong here? What am I doing wrong? I'm sure you guys are doing fine. In fact, you probably spotted the... I'll bet a lot of you have probably spotted the error before I have. But let me see, anyway. Event listener init. Oh. Pfft. Stupid on my part. Um, yeah, we still have it loading an image in the init method. That's why it's going wrong, because we renamed the image to make it fit our animation thing. Yeah, ignore that. Now let's go ahead and run it. Oh, and it just shot away. Test, pl yeah. Uh, comment out the line in the test player's update method so that Nicholas Cage will hold still. Now, what's happening? We got to the end, but we didn't loop. I thought I told it to loop. Mm, test player, 
no, uh, game object. We said play, right? And so in the animation where we do the playing, if loop, then current frame equals zero. Otherwise, current frame minus minus. Oh, okay, we did something really stupid. Um, we did not specify um, that last frame time is equal to current time after we finished. That prevents this from, that makes this basically be called incredibly fast. And that's why it looked like Nicholas Cage was kind of flickering right there. And look at that, we get this pulsating Nicholas Cage thing. Aren't we so proud of ourselves? And if you uh, adjust the frames per second right here, let's set it to something like 30 frames per second, it should flicker very quickly. And it does. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what if we set it for one? We should get one frame change every second. One, two, three, four, five, six. And look at that. And so that's basically the basics of how we do animation. Uh, yeah, this was probably... Uh, I made a couple mistakes during this video, so sorry about that. A little extra time it took to get those worked out. Um, so yeah, this is our basic animation system. And you can see it's actually really easy whenever you think about it. Animation is really just a matter of switching uh, between images that are being rendered to the screen. So if you like this video... Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for new videos every Monday through Friday, except next Monday because uh, that's New Year, so I won't be uploading one then. Um, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.